camera. The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today uh, for our webinar. I think we we can start uh, with just short introduction and just to 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 remind you what what camp space is and what what we're doing. and uh, yeah I'm gonna start from introducing myself. My name is Yuri Moroz. I'm CEO of Camp Space. And on the on the few slides, I'm gonna just show you what what we're doing. Maybe something new you'll find out about about the company. And then I'm gonna introduce uh, our today's speaker, Dr. Peter Yurovsky uh, from Camalife. But before doing this, I, I would like to ask you whether you can hear me and uh, whether you can see my screen. So could you please uh, type? In the chat, so you can, so we can see that, that so so we 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 know that you see uh, us and can hear us. So, can you can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know about the rest. If we unmute them, perhaps they can say hello. There are yeah. not that many of them. Yeah, but you should be able, they should be able to, to type in the chat box. So I'm going to just type. Yeah. Okay. Not. Okay. Uh, yeah. I just uh, typed in the chat box. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, Did anyone respond? Not, not yet. Not either. Yeah. Oh. Uh, okay. Yeah. So. So. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So they can hear can hear us. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you for the response. So uh, with that, uh, I would like to, as I said, would like to start with a short introduction of Camp Space and to remind you what we are, and then introduce Peter. Uh, so we are, yeah, we are basically a marketplace for small molecules, and we present present a single place where you can buy uh, items from multiple suppliers. And you don't need to go to many places, but to camp space. Uh, we host the largest catalog of small molecules and unique building blocks. We operate worldwide. Uh, we check all the, all the compounds uh, in terms of the re regulatory compliance. We have experienced procurement and customer support team that who can help you almost 24 hours a day. Uh, and uh, we support not only our catalog, but different catalog from different vendors. And currently uh, we have ability to integrate with ERP and procurement systems. Uh, our catalog contains over 330 thousand in stock building blocks and reagents provided by over 30 preferred suppliers and these compounds are available worldwide within just seven days we have large or 5.5 million uh, in stock screen compounds from over 10 suppliers well known to the to the public and to the to the scientific community uh, all the all the items we have they're focused on medicinal chemistry and pharma research um, with this special design based on the current reviewed literature and uh, the database the, the, the database what we host is actually constantly updated to to present you with the novel developments and niche products 
along with the in-stock offer, which is available within a week, uh, we have a billion, billions of make-on-demand analogs to the in-stock compounds, and those are not really virtual compounds, but something in between virtual and in-stock compounds, because uh, all the reaction procedures to make those compounds are well docu documented, and the typical uh, success rate is over 25% for two to six weeks delivery. Uh, as I said, uh, we have different options to access uh, our catalog, either through chemspace.com, which is a which is web-based web platform, or through API integration with the client application, uh, as well as ERP, as well as a punch-out integration with ERP. And uh, we're always trying to uh, expand access to our uh, products, and uh, actually, the, the, this is what, what we've done with, with Chem Alive uh, by just connecting uh, our database to, 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 their, to their service. And with that, I would like to present, introduce you uh, to Dr. Dr. Peter Yurovsky, who is a director at Chem Alive, and uh, who is presenting today and uh, describing their technology. So uh, Peter received his uh, bachelor's from New York uh, University. He got his PhD from UCLA, and uh, he is he he will present what what he is doing and uh, his friend, his approach. So with that, I would like to give the word to Peter. Okay, thanks, Yuri. Thanks a lot. Can everyone? I guess I'll assume everyone can hear me. I will say hi. Um, Let's second. I'll say hi with the camera in just a second. Okay. All right. I guess you have to look at my whole screen because um, you couldn't get the PowerPoint to work. But I'll look that up here. So yeah, um, thanks for the introduction. Uh, we, we've been working uh, with ChemSpace for quite some months now, uh, integrating their, their very large database of, of lead compounds, uh, mostly the idea of, um, for medicinal chemistry and, and drug development uh, approaches. Um, and uh, that culminates uh, finally in, in connecting that data to our quantum chemistry technology. So. Let me try to, to show that. So we'll be talking about Construct, which is which is a software we've developed. It's one of many softwares with federal development in our QT series. And this, this particular software is um, designed to, to facilitate the purchasing of small molecules online by validating them with uh, state-of-the-art so predictive analytics and quantum chemistry. So um, just the basic idea of uh, of the company is, is to deliver quantum chemistry, which, which is widely regarded as the most accurate, most state-of-the-art technology for predicting properties of molecules, but to deliver that uh, in a democratic way to everybody around the world um, with an internet connection uh, using cloud resources to do the computations. Um, and the main hurdle to doing that is, is the fact that uh, not only is quantum chemistry often very hard to implement, uh, you have to have a lot of expertise to, to know how to build the software packages and deploy them and know what kind of methodology to use, but, but also it's really slow in most cases. So you need to speed it up so that it's commensurate with uh, most chemists' workflow in their, in their lab or office so that they need results faster than uh, four days from now. So we have to deal with making it faster and also making it more accessible to everyone. And this is, this is how we've done that. Um, we've made it possible to do uh, quantum mechanics directly from 2D chemical structures. So the idea is if you can, you can build a, or draw a molecule, you can do quantum chemistry with our service and platform. Um, we put that on the cloud so you have no, no need to deal with infrastructure issues. Uh, we've also put behind that quite a lot of pre-computed data. So there, Lots of molecules which have already been computed, which you don't have to then recompute unnecessarily. Um, I'll show you some of the data on that later. 
And then also, because the data is in one place and it's consistent, we can do advanced analytics on that data, like machine learning techniques, and also improve the speed. So, um, right, like I said, Construct is the software we're talking about today. It's mostly a molecular design software. Um, before that, we've been doing contracts mostly and building our interaction with the chemical industry. And we're working on a number of other uh, other software packages. Uh, next step would be uh, working more with uh, structure-based uh, design and drug discovery and working also at reaction analytics and optimizing reactions. And then uh, molecular properties like, like color and uh, emission spectrum. So here we are at the moment. Um, and we'll We'll be showing you exactly what, what that means. So the, the the thing that Construct does, it takes a smiles, so it takes your your drawn structure or, or your smiles um, uh, format, and it will turn it into a fully enumerated structural space for that molecule. So we will consider all the totomeric forms of your drawn molecule, even if you've drawn the wrong totomeric form, for example, for example, it will find the the, the canonical form. It will consider all the stereoisomeric aspects of your molecule. So often chemists forget to put in their chiral centers. This will strip those and then enumerate them all. So you'll get all the diastereomers back. And it'll also look at the shape of the molecule. So all the conformational shapes of that molecule will be enumerated and, and presented. In the end, what we would get is a is an energetic picture of your molecule. So not just here are the totemers or here are the stereoisomers of the molecule, but here are the relative energies, here are the probabilities that effectively that one of these structures is more likely than the other. One is more more uh, representative of the, the shape or or the structure of that molecule. So this sits uh, this technology sits on infrastructure, which I'll talk in more and more detail about. Um, but we can deploy thousands of core in a matter of a few minutes. Um, for the moment, it's a freemium technology, so we won't pay anything. But it also, we we haven't deployed more advanced uh, quantum chemistry methods like DFT. So we're mostly just deploying semi-empirical uh, computations, which are far better than the typical typical calculations currently available. We have 3.5 million molecules in our database um, and 200 million individual structures at the moment. Um, so I'll show you some d data on that. So there's already quite a lot of uh, pre-computed data sitting in this. this. So the, 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 the main idea, which we'll get to in live demo, uh, is that you take a, a molecule. This is a, a molecule that you'll understand why, why it's there in a few slides. Um, it's a 1,3-dione. Uh, it has a chiral center. It has a few possibilities for totemerization. If you put that into our platform and click enumerate, you'll get the slide to the right. You'll get all the structures enumerated. You can select them individually or select them all and then submit them for computation uh, with semi empirical quantum mechanics. The result of that computation will be a uh, manipulatable rotatable structure with the energetic space of the totemers and diastereomers on the left and the energetic space of the conformations of each totem or diastereomer on the right. Um, this is fully automated, fully democratized. All you need to know how to do is draw the molecule. So we'll talk about how that happens now and then get to a specific use case uh, involving 1,3 dions and also hydrazines. So uh, first of all, if you want to try this out, it's uh, free. Like I mentioned, you can go to app.chemalive.com. You can register. Uh, we don't even check emails. You can make up an email. We don't care. We'd rather you put in a real one, of course, because we'd like to inform you of uh, future developments. But you can you can try it right now. No, no obligation um, at app.chemalive.com. So sign in. Uh, now, the, the basic architecture of what we're doing here is, is you'll be working with the front end. Uh, behind that front end is, is a remote API. There's a database, which is PostgreSQL database. There's a back end, and there's a computational engine, which is using a bunch of different open source uh, computational softwares. Um, the interaction with ChemSpace happens here with the external APIs. So what we've done now is, is hooked up our front end to the API of ChemSpace because what we found in our initial launch was that everyone was coming to the platform and drawing one molecule at a time. Now, the point of this, this service, this, this tool, is to do thousands of molecules at a time. We want to we build libraries of compounds so that we can approach chemistry from a more statistical standpoint. Uh, so we needed to fix this problem. We've partnered with ChemSpace to fix that. So now you can draw a single molecule and search ChemSpace's large 
database to generate a library of similar molecules, either through similarity or substructure searching. So that's the, the main point of this collaboration is to allow chemists to access much, much more uh, chemical structures to do palpitations. So um, I'll go through this rather quickly. I've mentioned some of this already. So the remote API is the JSON RPC. Some people might be interested in this kind of engineering uh, speak. Um, so the back end is, is managing the users, it's managing the distribution of the computations on AWS infrastructure through a Spark cluster. Um, the engine is running uh, OpenBabel or Kit. It's running CP2K. So it's doing chem informatics. It's doing some molecular mechanics and also quantum chemistry. It's all it's all fully fully automatized. Databases PostgreSQL, as I mentioned, it's, it's the more data we put into it, the faster everything becomes because there's less you have to actually calculate. So right now we're sitting at 200 million structures. Um, and this can scale in principle to 6,000 core simultaneously in, in about two to three minutes. Um, so one could one could submit a thousand molecules and, and realistically expect, depending on their size, to have them all computed within, within 10 minutes. Um, some information about the, the algorithm, although I won't spend too much time on this. Um, the, the main workflow is that we, we take your smiles or your drawn structure, we parse it, we check it for errors, we see if it's in the database or not. If it is, uh, we return the, the pre-computed data. If the ex exact query you've made is not in the database, then we go through our chem informatics engine and the rest of our engine features um, and eventually return the, the results if it's a successful calculation. Um, the chem informatics, uh, there's some steps that are quite interesting. I, I won't spend too much time on this, but um, uh, once you start generating the confirmations, we actually do quite a lot of work filtering them and making clusters of the different shapes so that we can give back a representative uh, picture of the shape of the molecule. Um, and so there are also no redundant uh, molecules that are computed. This, this will become important in a few slides. The same is true of the quantum engine. We Once we have those, those molecular mechanics structures, we then refilter them after computation at quantum level and see if there are any structures which have collapsed onto each other. Um, we check to make sure that the, the molecule hasn't changed connectivity, so no bonds were broken that we didn't expect. Um, we also check to make sure that the structures are stable, stable structures on their potential surfaces. So that's the frequency analysis. If any of these things are not true, then there's a fault and then you'll see that the molecule fails. This happens uh, maybe five to 10% of the time. So we, we don't want failed structures in our database. So we have a pretty hard cutoff for, for, for rejecting structures which are failed. Don't be alarmed if you find some of your molecules have failed. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. So in the end, um, you have a, a lot of control over what you compute because we don't want to unnecessarily burden our, our, our servers with computations which you don't are not interested in. So um, you actually have access to eight different end states from, from our toggles that, that, that you'll see in a few slides. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to look at the totemeric space, yes or no. Chirality is already is done automatically. It's not really up to you because, because of various reasons. Um, so if, if there is chiral or if it's not chiral, that, that, that happens at this stage. And then you can decide whether or not you want to do a full confirmation of space analysis or just get one structure. And that's represented here in red. So that's that's a molecule in red bar and the white bars are confirmations of the molecule. So you could have a single structure returned as a result. You could have all the confirmations of a single structure. You could have just the lowest energy structure of two different structures or all of the confirmations of both of those, et cetera, et cetera. So you can you can go uh, full on full on computation all the way to the right, all the way down to a simple a single computation to the left. So full control with the with the the interface to decide your level of involvement. Um, now, I mentioned before that we, we filter a lot of similar shaped confirmations. Um, this is represented here in our data model. So the, the first thing we do is, is we look to, to, to enumerate all the totemers of your input. Um, it's very important to do that before the stereoisomer enumeration, right? Because some totemers will become a chiral once they're enumerated. Some will create two different diastereomers after, after enumeration. So once you have the totemers, you then enumerate them chirality, and then you look at the confirmations of all the stereoisomers which will, will produce. Um, a lot of these confirmations actually become redundant. So you'll find that once you move from your mechanics level, in our, in our case, we use UFF, 
or MMFF, once you move from that stage to the quantum semi-empirical level, you find actually that there are about 30 to 40 percent less confirmations that result, which means that many of the confirmations of uh, molecular mechanics are spurious, that they're not real, that they just they arrive because the molecular mechanics is too inaccurate to discern structures which are actually in the same structure. So in the end, you end up with a simple, a sim more simple uh, shape, shape space of quantum chemistry. We'll see that graphically soon. So, um, yeah, so this is some of the data I just want to show on, on our database, which we've analyzed. Um, this, this was on a smaller subset. Like I mentioned, we have 200 million structures. This is on 68 million. Um, this, this is the uh, universal force field results. If we look at the, the number of confirmations that we have relative energy, against the relative energy of those confirmations, you find universally uh, that the, the global average is about 2.5 pico per mole. And it's an interesting question as to why. Uh, I don't know why. I don't know if there's a real answer to why that number pops out of this, this data set. Um, what I can tell you, though, is after, uh, even whether I go to 200 million structures or more, this basic shape doesn't change. So we've converged on that. So this is a lot of data um, at the universal force field level. If you go to the PM6 level, which is which is our semi-empirical level, um, the number of confirmations drops considerably. As I mentioned, many of these structures are spurious, and the distribution tightens quite a lot. So all of these loosey-goosey structures are removed and, and collapse, and you end up with a much tighter distribution, which is much more reflective of reality. So there's a huge benefit in PM6 over the force field level. Um, this is the, the, the graph of all the totemers, and there are 900,000 at the time when we did this. And this is also, there's some interesting artifacts here that if you look at the relative free energy of each totemeric form, um, relative to the count, you have these, these spikes here and there, which is telling us that, that actually there are certain kinds of totemers that exist in our database, uh, which are overrepresented. So actually, we could probably improve our totem code a bit to get this, uh, this smoothed out so there are more different kinds of totemers. Actually, I can tell you which totemers these are. This is a protonation of an of a aromatic um, nitrogen atom from somewhere else that they always come in around 10 to 10 to 15 k alpha mole and that's why this is a big spike there. So um, that, that's some of the analysis of the data we've generated with our, with our construct code. There's some more of it um, just comparing the force field to PM6. So here we're comparing the relative energy, the relative error between PM6 and, and new effect force field. So between quantum and classical mechanics and it goes from anywhere from 80 percent error to 100 percent error considering UFL. Um, so what that means is, at least from my point of view, that classical mechanics uh, basically gives you uh, no result at all, whereas quantum mechanics gives you something that's that's much more reliable. Um, in the case of MMFF, for example, you end up with this bizarre, you know, bizarre result where it's, there's no reliability whatsoever. To that so um, quantum makes a big difference in terms of structural analysis. Uh, and this is also supporting, supported by um, Jeff Hutchinson, who's the principal developer of Open Babel, he made a nice paper a couple of years ago about uh, Beam 6 versus other force fields. Um, so there's a, there's a, a large magnitude shift in, in accuracy relative to high level DFT calculations. So we, we gain a lot by doing these kinds of calculations. I would say we, classical mechanics is effectively a tinker toy kind of calculation that doesn't tell you anything, uh, whereas quantum mechanics begins to tell you something of use. Um, finally, just to get through this, uh, we compared our results at PM6 to uh, 50,000 X-ray crystal structures. Uh, we also did this with UFF, and we found that actually UFF is great at getting the right the right mid global minimum from a crystal structure because it was parameterized to do that. Um, so most of the time, it does a good job. It, it gets it hits this one. So the, the lowest energy structure is exactly the same as the crystal structure. Um, for PM6, this is also true. But, like I mentioned before, the structures which are off equilibrium, so the ones that are not the global minimum, are actually much more accurately calculated now. So you have more information about the near near minimum structures, which is important in a drug discovery context. So PM6 improves that as well. So let's, let's look at a little use case, um, which we, we did with ChemSpace. Uh, I had a, a project where I wanted to um, design a bunch of uh, pyrazole molecules for a hypothetical drug discovery research program. And I wanted to use a, a consistent synthetic method to get there. 
And that method was going to be the nor 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 pyrazole uh, synthesis, which is in, involves um, involves a one three dione and a hydrogen. It's a very efficient reaction, um, which yields two different uh, regio isomers, but it's it's a high yielding reaction. And, and there are many, many thousands of examples, for, exa for example, in, in REACSIS, 3,300 registered more files or reactions. There are about uh, two, two or 3,000 uh, hydrogens in that same database, and about 15,000 dions. So actually, if you do the calculation, you could generate a library of upwards of 25 million uh, pyrazoles simply from uh, molecules which have already been synthesized and have but no recipes. So it's a good, a good chemical space that one could explore. So the idea then is, is what can we do with, with good, accurate structures um, to, to help, help our drug discovery library? And so what we did uh, in the hypothetical situation is we took this known active drug. We assumed that the structure on the right here was the active substructure. So this is the structure which matters. This is the part that delivers the drug efficacy. And what we did was we, we worked with ChemSpace to find all the molecules which, which they could purchase, hydrazines and 1,3-dions, that would produce uh, a set of, of pyrazole products which, were, which had substitution on both these aromatic things. And that, that produced 1,800 pyrazole molecules, which could be synthesized within a couple of days, uh, ordering them, having them arrive with ChemSpace in, in a week, under a week. And, and then putting them together to, to yield uh, products. So one could have this library uh, very quickly. So let's see if we can find something in it that, that would be worth making. Um, and that's, that's when we get the demo. Just give me a second to figure out how to do that. Everyone's still with me, Yuri? Yes, 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 where was you? Okay. Let me... Okay, good, good, good. So, um, right. So, I'm now at the app chemlab, uh, com, and I have already made a, a library to use. It's called Pyrosol, but I just wanted to demonstrate how to do this. Um, so, when you go there and register, this will be the front screen you come to. Um, the first thing you're going to need to do is make a new library. Um, so, this is just to organize uh, your thoughts. I'm just going to call it tests. You can Give a description, um, and then we ask you to to just give a little information about what what the library is about. So here's organic chemistry. Let's say it's a medicinal chemistry project. So again, to help you organize your, your projects and make sense of what you've done. So you you can make a new project that way. Um, just just to show you how to do that takes a few seconds to register. So anyway, that, that, that would be there. I've already made one called Pyrazoles for the webinar, so let's go into it. Um, now, when you, when you get to the beginning, uh, you have two options for entering molecules. You can either, you can either put in your, your smiles. Now, I don't know about you, but, but most chemists don't know how to write smiles. There are probably some savants out there who, who can write molecules and smiles, but it's not that common. Uh, I know I know a few things. You can do that. Lots of season ends will tend to tend to work, tend to give you something real. Um, so you can you can put your your smiles in here, uh, and you can add those molecules to your your staging area if you want. Um, or if you have a list of smiles uh, from another project, you can easily copy and paste them here and, and add them for computation. Um, or you can draw them. So you can go to the two D drawing uh, function, which is uh, an implementation catcher. And so we're interested in hydrazines, right? So let's let's put a hydrazine in here. Simple molecule, easy to draw. Um, and what we want to do is find to see how many hydrazines ChemSpace has for us that we can purchase. Um, if I do it just like this, there'll be a problem because we'll get lots of derivatives where the NH2 is substituted. So let's let's make that uh, explicitly hydrogen so that it doesn't give us problems. This will give us all primary means in our hydrazine. Um, right, and so now we have this search feature, which is the, the feature we added in beta 1.1. Um, ChemSpace is the library, and then you have uh, three different searching options. You can look exactly for this molecule of interest, or you can look for similar molecules or substructures. So let's let's choose substructures, and then you have um, the ability to to search in different uh, databases that, that ChemSpace provides. Um, the real database uh, is, is 1.1 billion, I think, Fury, that's right, or 
something like that. So it's a big, big database. Um, but not all of those molecules are purchasable. So uh, let's let's try um, the building blocks. Okay, this one will actually return a URL where the products can be can be purchased. Let me click the search button. I've done this in the past. I know it'll work. I know that it'll find many things. Just gonna give it a second. To, it's telling us that it's it's searching the database. And it's found some results, search number one. Right, so these are the, the results so far. Um, there are six by four results per page, but notice down here you have 84 pages. That's 2,016 hydrogen molecules that, that we could buy today um, that we found. Now, you can, you can select them individually. I like that one, I like that one for some reason. That looks like a good molecule. Or, you don't have any time for that, so you're gonna select all of them, right? And you're going to then go add molecules. And what happens when you add them is they go to the staging area down here. Now, um, I have a lot of things already in the staging area, so I'm just gonna to try to go use the carousel and go to the last, last page to show you exactly what I just entered. So here are the molecules I just entered in the, in the staging area. Um, and you'll see that they all say draft. So I haven't done anything with them, although I've computed them previously, so we'll have to wait for the results. Um, so what you can do here is, is, is hit those toggles that I, I mentioned before that, that control the extent of, of calculations. Um, this is an interesting hydrazine result, but anyway, let's move past that. Oh, the, uh, these are the two molecules I made in this miles window that I made using the season ends. That's why they're sitting here. So let's ignore those. Those are nonsense molecules. Um, so here you can choose uh, to calculate all the totemers by hitting this, this toggle. And you can also do all the confirmations or you could do just give me the confirmations of the lowest totemer or just give me the totemers. Don't give me any confirmations. You have every possibility uh, that you can, you can try. Um, you can also just decide to do everything up here at the top. And then once you're ready and you've decided that you want to compute something, you click save and compute or save and submit. It takes just a second to register. There you go. They say in progress. They should all say complete, or most of it should say complete very quickly. And then you have you have your results. Um, so these have all been computed with some empirical quantum mechanics. Um, the results we'll see in a second. There's some uh, in useful information that appears. Uh, this tells you how many structures are in there. You can get the being key or smiles. You can copy them out. You can also say, I want to buy this. You can go to ChemSpace. That will load up the ChemSpace website. And you can you can engage uh, with buying that, that particular molecule that you found. Um, but let's look for an interesting one. Uh, I think there should be a few here. I don't think they're probably on the previous page. I want to get something that's there's a lot of different structures to to navigate through and uh, so we can pick something like like this one which has four different structures right so here, here's a molecule uh that was in our database this is a pm6 result um we have chiral center so that's that's good that, that means we have doubling of all the numbers we also have at least one totem so, for example, this one we have proton has moved from the amine to the to the oxygen. So that means we have four different four different totemers that have resulted. They're all graphed here. You can either navigate through here, or you can navigate through the energy bars. And for each totemer, we also have some confirmations, which might be of interest on the right. So you can look at the different. Structure. So that's all uh, analyzed and presented to you in a way that's that's fully interactive, interactive and, um, and easy to use. You can also pull the data. So, for example, if you're using other kinds of uh, other kinds of software like Schrodinger, you might want to take this result as, a, as an initial result. And of course, you can do that. We'll we'll output it as a as a SDF file, so you can get all the all the different confirmations concatenated SDF. Get yeah, just the same the symbol, this, this simple structure that's being shown on screen, or you can get all the totemers as concatenated SDF. So you can export the data and use it elsewhere. We are, of course, also 
you know, in the state of development, where we're adding a lot of you know, analytics to this platform. So you don't have to take the data from the platform and move to another software, but we're not quite there yet. So in the meantime, you can, you can export the data to other places. Um, so let's move back. And uh, we can, of course, also look for the other part of our, our data set. So you can draw a 1 3 dion. You can search through the databases like we did before. Get a result. This one says what? It says um, again, 84 pages. Uh, I guess there's a limit to how many. Yeah, there's a limit of 2,000 that you get back. So these are actually hitting that limit. There's actually more hydrazines and more one through diamonds than are being returned. That's why they both have the same the same number of uh, carousel uh, pages. But again, we have we have our results. We can we can go select them all. We can add them to the, to the computational stage and then get get the quantum chemical results now. Once you have all those computations going um, and they're finished, the, the question is, what do you do with that? Well, so I will go back to our, our demo, back to the back to the PowerPoint to, to talk a little bit about that. Um, once you have that data, this is an example of how to use it. So if you're in the drug drug discovery kind of uh, domain, what, what you are interested in is knowing how similar your your molecules are to your active. Uh, and how much more diversity you can deliver at the same time. Um, so what we've done here uh, is we've taken all of the SDF data and we process it to, with a piece of code called OBFIT uh, using the UFF data and as well as the PM6 data. And what we've done is we've taken the root mean squared deviation of the aligned molecules. So all that, that 1800 pyrazoles that we made, we've aligned them with this substructure and we've gotten this RMSD value. And then we've also looked at the relative strain energy or the relative conformational energy of all of those conformations, all those pyrosols. This uh, data set with all these data points represents about 400,000 data points. And down here, this represents the PM6 about 250,000 or so, 300,000, I forget exactly what the number is. But you can already see a very, very clear distinction between the classical mechanics result and the quantum mechanics result. In the, in the classical mechanics result, you have basically a blob. Um, you have all kinds of structures all over the place, which mostly kind of fit into the two angstrom, two RMSD angstrom deviation range going up to 20 kcal per mole. It's not very helpful. And over here is a picture of, of one molecule in that data set with all the confirmations overlaid. You can see that they all kind of form a, what my, my wife calls a kind of brain, because she's a neuroscientist, so it looks a little bit like a brain. And it's smeared out everywhere. The fluorine, these are fluorines that are smeared out everywhere. They're sort of very, very squishy, squashy. There's nothing to really say about it. Um, when you move to the PM6 level, um, which, you know, of course, costs you a bit more computational time. Uh, it's not a millisecond to get a result. It takes about 15 seconds, but you can still process quite a lot of data. Um, all of a sudden, you have this nice resolution going down around RMSD 1.5. And then you have the resolution here going up, up an energy of 25 kcal. You have these four quadrants which appear. These four quadrants correspond to four distinct conformational types over 1800 molecules and about 300,000 data points. This is a very clear uh, result that tells you something very fundamental about the molecular class you're looking at. There are There is a class of conformations which sits in one area, there's another one. And you can actually see that in the picture. Here on the right, right bottom, you have a little black spot. That black spot is a hole. Because on the bottom here, you, you've defined better your confirmations. You've gotten rid of a lot of um, confirmations which are actually not real, so the spurious ones, but you've also gotten better quality structures. And that means that this line at 1.5 angstroms corresponds to this hole, which means you resolve your confirmations into two forms. One where you have this fluorine up, and one where you have this fluorine. And all the in-betweener kind of confirmations have been obliterated. They're not in the data set anymore. 
Um, you can also explain these other two quadrants. Uh, I won't get into all that, but that's another confirmation feature of this kind of model. So the, the, the result, the visual result is that quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics gives you much more manageable data that allows you to make much more intelligent decisions about your, your molecular class. And it's, it's, a, it's a night and day situation. You shouldn't be using classical mechanics if you can avoid it uh, to do this kind of work. So um, another point to make about that data set, which I think is very important, is that if you, um, if you take all the hits that are below one angstrom and below five kcal per mole, so this quadrant here, you might say to yourself, you know, those, those confirmations are going to be where I think my, my drug will these are the best, the best shapes that'll fit my, my, my problem. If you do that, and you take out the ones which have the most number of hits in that zone, you get these structures. You get the UFF hits and PM, PM6 hits. And the main point between these is that there's only a 30% um, similarity between these hits. That means that PM6 is giving you different molecules than UFF hits. So there's a quantitative and qualitative difference in the data that you get. It's not just shifting the numbers a little bit, it's making a, a vastly different, uh, different outcome. So that, that's the, the end of that. I hope that, that, that helps you. This is a team. Um, we worked very hard on this uh, engineering business, um, algorithm development, uh, and so on. There are a lot of other people have been involved in this project. So I'll do that here. It's, they're all on the website. You can see uh, business advisors scientific advisors, et cetera. And, um, this is really the first, the first uh, piece of software we've developed uh, and put out there for use. And we really like uh, everyone listening to try it and to, to tell us what they think and to, to give us stories about how they use the data. That's really critical for us. So that's why we're making it free and available to everybody. Um, there's not a zero cost to doing these calculations. AWS charges us a little bit. Um, but we're giving that that value to, to you because we'd like to hear how you use the data, how it's helped, how it hasn't helped. All those things are important to us as we develop further and, and think about the next steps and what we need to do to improve it and so on. So I, I please I, I encourage you to, to try it. Um, I also encourage you to, to validate your structures before you buy them. So, you know, if, if you're going to buy a molecule, it makes sense that you Make sure that its shape is what you think it was, and make sure that you you understand its totemeric um, description and stylized term description before you purchase it. Um, and if you use our platform, you can do that, and you can get an increased confidence. And then, of course, you can directly link to ChemSpace to buy it, so you'll have more confidence in what you buy, and and, and hopefully a better outcome and uh, better output from your work. So, um, also I'd like to thank all of our funders, etc various cloud clouds. So, so thanks for listening and then I'll, I'll happily answer questions at this point. Let's see if there are any. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Peter. Thank you everyone, everyone for listening. And uh, please, uh, if you have any questions, just type them in, in the questions uh, mark. While we're waiting, I would like to tell you that, uh, that the webinar will be recorded and the record will be available to you. Uh, Upload on YouTube. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So um, yeah, the, 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 the webinar will be available and uploaded on YouTube. Yeah, of course. I take some time for questions to be written. Okay, here is the question. So how how would you see this technique in virtual screening? 
Right. Um, well, I mean, it, it's it is a virtual screening tool um, in, in that it's it's a ligand ligand based um, virtual screening tool. Uh, the, the main idea is to and right now ligand ligand based screening. If you're doing 3D ligand based screening, uh, virtual screening, um, you're using mechanics primarily, and you're only using quantum chemistry when you have a particular particular structural feature which you're not so sure about or you have a, a high value lead that, that you want to look at more for the lead optimization. So um, if you start with quantum mechanics, you, you gain quite a lot. First of all, you gain um, confidence that, that the structures you're getting back are real, or let's say the real in quotes. Um, that the energetics allow you to better pick the structures which are reflective of the shapes you're looking for. So they say shape is 70% of drug discovery, right? So getting a good shape is going to be very impactful. What you also get is because you've already done a quantum mechanics calculation, you can also advance the scope of what you're doing. So part of what we do is adding uh, further tools beyond just shape and dotamer prediction. You can predict uh, electronic properties, you can predict reactions, and so on. So um, you, you've already moved from a classical regime to a modern physics regime and understand please that molecular mechanics is based on Isaac Newton's uh, physics it's 1707 it's you know hundreds of years old uh, so I, in my opinion we should move towards quantum which is modern physics uh, and, and get better results so we make better decisions so it's it's the already you know you can already use this as a ligand ligand based virtual screening design tool and I encourage you to do so Yeah. Thank you. Okay, if uh, there are no other questions at the moment, please feel free us to to to, co to contact us and uh, send us email or to to me or or to Peter. And with that, I would like to thank you, Peter. And to all of you for Thank the you. webinar, and I would like to close the webinar right now. Thank you again, and uh, have a good one. Thank you, Yuri. Thank you, everyone. Bye.